the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits fell to 250,000 last week, a sign that demand for workers remains high. But that strong overall labor market has made it difficult for state and local governments to find enough workers, affecting almost every service they provide, from trash pickup to policing. Special correspondent and Washington Post columnist Catherine Rampell has the story. I'm afraid to ask, what's floating on top? So grease is one of our biggest problems. Ah, so, uh, it's uh, grease. On the most glamorous of NewsHour reporting trips, Bill Davis showed us around his workplace, a wastewater treatment plant. That's exactly what you think it is. Wastewater is typically a light brown color, and it sort of smells earthy. I mean, it's not, it's not real in your face. You've had some time to acclimate yourself to it, though. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it's just poopy water. Public service is noble work, but it's not for everyone. It can be smelly, stressful, and often not super lucrative. Here in Richland County, South Carolina, nearly a quarter of government jobs are now vacant, up from 13% before the pandemic. And it's not the only place struggling to hire, says researcher Joshua Franzel. Overall, state and local employment is still below its peak from the February of 2020 time period. Nationwide, private sector jobs have recovered, with more jobs today than pre-COVID. But state and local governments are still way behind, despite a lot of COVID relief money from the feds. Partly, this is about retirements. The state and local sector has been three to five years older on average relative to the, their private sector peers. And those not yet retirement age are demanding a lot more pay. But government employers are often slow to adjust. One of the things we were challenged with is if you've got $15 an hour and you're going to go to Amazon and make $18 an hour to drive a forklift and pick up boxes and listen to your AirPods all day, do you want to do that or do you want to come play in the poopy water or do you want to go make 20%, 25% more and work at Amazon? It's especially hard for governments to match pay for jobs where private employers are rapidly raising wages, like truck driving and construction. What would help the situation? Money. Brian Knight and Will Truesdale of Jefferson County, Colorado's Road and Bridge Department said they were short 36 out of 190 positions. When people are leaving, what do they tell you about why they're leaving? The majority that we hear is pay. You know, you have to support your family. The rising costs of fuel, um, food, everything going on right now. And to be able to do the same job in the private sector, get paid X amount more, it's, it's, it's that decision at the end of the day. Worker shortages alongside higher material costs are causing problems all year round. In the summer, potholes aren't getting filled. In the winter, roads aren't being plowed. If you don't have the, the personnel to do it, we can't complete these projects, we can't do what we do. So our road network, it's deteriorating quicker than ever. We have more cars on the road, more people in the area. With the staffing, we're just falling farther behind. The amount of lane miles we should be maintaining a road or improving is dropping. Constituents notice, Jefferson County Manager Don Davis says. The citizens, all they know is they pay taxes and they expect these services to be done. They don't necessarily understand that it's unlimited expectations against limited resources. In Richland County, sometimes that means garbage pickup problems, says Public Works Director Mike Maloney. We have had some other issues with miscollections in that, and those were due to lack of workforce, uh, replacement workforce that wasn't trained properly, and also the equipment. Trucks and other equipment have hit supply chain snags. But contractor Charles Bruce Johnson's key concern is still labor. There's been a very low pool of drivers that have been interested, and it's been a challenge. Jefferson County Sheriff Jeff Schrader says it's not only about the money. Some jobs have become less attractive for other reasons. Through 2020, we saw a lot of people who were just getting out of law enforcement. People who are getting hired into law enforcement aren't my age. They're younger people. They're social groups were probably questioning, based upon the dialogue that was going on, the role of police and its legitimacy. The work has always been stressful and polarizing, but today it's even harder to recruit applicants. From 2019, pre-pandemic, pre-George Floyd, up until 
2021, we saw a 39% decrease in the number of applications for deputy sheriffs. He argues the stakes are high. If public safety, sheriff's offices, police departments aren't able to have staff that put first responders out on the street or we're not able to um, bring people into jail that need to be in jail uh, because of staffing concerns, ultimately the public's at risk. Between higher crime, the pandemic, and dangerous heat waves, first responders are spread thin, says Richland's Assistant County Administrator, John Thompson. We see that because of the increased demand for services, that means an increased workload for that particular crew, for that paramedic and for that EMT working on that ambulance. Captain Winta Adams with the Emergency Services Department says burnout is worsening worker shortages. As soon as the crew goes in service, they're normally getting a 911 call you know, right off the bat. And um, they'll run the call, get to the hospital, get another 911 call. Run that call, get to the hospital, get another 911 call. It is very hard for them to find time to take a break, whether that's to eat breakfast or lunch or just be able to use the facilities. They're recruiting aggressively to find more staff and recently opened a new training boot camp. Our job as EMS professionals is to save lives. If we don't have the adequate staff, to run the calls to get to the patients that need life-saving measures, then we are not able to do our job saving lives. Government managers are also trying to increase pay, though voters and elected officials are not always keen on handing more tax dollars to public workers. There is a 4% cost of living adjustment uh, that will go into effect for the next fiscal year. Even though the Inflation has yes, absolutely. Has been yeah. higher than four percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I tell you, we can't compete with inflation. Governments are also recruiting by Use singing the virtues have. of public service. You know, government has got a, a bad rap, and, and local government gets broad brushed into that national narrative. But uh, says Jefferson County's Davis. You know, I was in the Marine Corps for 27 years. And people that work at local government, I have found them to be every bit as patriotic as any Marine sailor, soldier, airman, or coastie that I ever led in almost 30 years. They really want to make a difference. That only goes so far. The challenge is, is that when you're asking employees to give more, give more, give more, but they still have bills to pay. That makes it really difficult in the long run when you don't have the revenue or you don't have the money to be able to pay them what is competitive in the market. As it turns out, even Davis himself has now been poached by another local government. He switched jobs shortly after this interview. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Katherine Rampell in Jefferson County, Colorado.